All right, folks, how you doing? This is live on the 17th of January 2014. This is the Views Expressed. I am your host, Reverend Wayne S. Pierce. Yes, I am a reverend. I don't always use that title, but I am a reverend. If you have any questions, please go to ulchq.com and ask them. Or ulcseminary.org and ask Amy Long over there. Ask Amy Long <clears throat> all about the Universal Life Church. Lots of things going on in the news today, of course. And, of course, for my regular fans of the Wayne S. Pierce Show, uh, I didn't do a show today, so this is going to be a combination. And due to the fact that it is Friday, yes, Friday, the 17th of January, 2014, I'm going to lighten up just a bit. I've been a little stressed, a little frustrated. I want to give a big shout out to Nick Tucker of Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. And uh, of course, distortedreality.podbean.com. Want to uh, you know give a big shout out to him because he talks about the same thing that I talk about and that others talk about. But you see the difference between Glenn Beck, Alex Jones. Well, not so much Alex Jones, but Glenn Beck and all the other <clears throat> people like him. And and uh, except for I want to also give a big shout out if anybody knows this person or has heard this person or can email this person, please let them know that I have a great deal of respect for this man, and that is Michael Savage. And uh, yes, so there are people like myself, Nick Tucker, Alex Jones, Michael Savage, we're all out there, we're all telling you that What's going on behind the scenes? I tell you who's pushing the buttons and pulling the handles, and guess what? I don't think there's a whole lot of people that really care. I'm just putting it out there, folks. Just putting it out there. So, tell me what you think. Tell me how you feel. Tell me what's going on. In your neck the woods by emailing me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. Also want to put this out there if you want to sponsor this show. Uh, currently, until the end of the month, if you go to freeamericaradio.us, go to the sponsors page. Those current rates are good until the end of January. And then everything changes. And I'll keep you I'll keep you notified as to what those changes are. So anyway, email me if you have any questions. Free America Radio at USA.com. Free America Radio at USA.com. And uh, no question is off limits. Please ask me anything you like. If I don't know, I will tell you I don't know. I don't mind that because I don't know everything, okay? <laughs> I'm good with that, all right? Hey, guess what? Because it's Friday and I'm going to lighten up just a little bit. Uh, I, uh, I want to tell you what's coming up. So, <clears throat> oh, by the way, if my sound kind of glitches a little bit like it's skipping, that's because I'm on my laptop and therefore, uh, well, <clears throat> lots of things happening. My uh, desktop took a crap. So my desktop went to the big uh, IT center into the sky. And, uh, well, you know how that goes, right? Hey, folks. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com, and go to the website, freeamericaradio.us. What is reality? The foundation of reality is based on many concepts. Each person perceives reality differently. In the book, The Grid, by Marie D. Jones and Larry Flaxman, they explore the hidden infrastructure of reality. Get your copy today at Barnes & Noble and Amazon.com. 
The Grid by Marie D. Jones and Larry Flaxman. Sharing the truth, one fact at a time. Defending liberty and freedom. Fighting the new world order. This is the Free America Radio Network. It's Spencer Hughes from The Spencer Hughes Show on Spreaker.com, and you're listening to The Views Express Live. Yes, you are. How you doing? This is uh, The Views Express Live for the 17th of January, 2014. I am your host, Reverend Wayne S. Pierce. How y'all doing today? You can email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com freeamericaradio at usa.com you can also go to the website at freeamericaradio.us freeamericaradio.us is the place to go i haven't put up any new blogs yet been kind of busy doing my research i'm the only i'm a one-man operation here folks this is all on my back this is all coming out of my pocket so Anyway, what do we do? We go to, we're going to lighten it up a bit because if, uh, for, for those that follow me on the Wayne S. Pierce show, I didn't have a show today earlier because of, I just had way too much to get into. So I thought, well, why not just combine the shows like I usually do sometimes? So I do. So this is a combined show and because it's Friday, I'm just going to lighten up a little bit. All right. Hey, don't, don't, uh, you know. Don't get your knickers in a knot there, all right? Anyway, go to Free America Radio on Facebook. Free America Radio on Facebook. I know I say that so fast, people are going, where, what? (laughs) Uh, Anyway. Now, there, okay, maybe, (laughs) excuse me, folks. Never drink chocolate milk before a show. From MSNBC, the story the news is finally talking about, Ed Schultz led the coverage over the dangers of TPP, that is the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership. Okay. Trans-Pacific Partnership. It's a video, never mind. (laughs) Anyway, if if you hear a little, you know, like skipping and stuff like that, I I promise you, let me do this, folks. I'll make this easier on you and on me. Um, The... um, I was out and about today. You know, I had to go for a walk. And just to get out or else I would have gone completely out of my gourd. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I went for a walk and I'm walking and I'm seeing stuff and I get this feeling that something's happening. And, you know, it's just one of those things, right? And I'm walking and I'm seeing all, you know, these people and I'm seeing the cars and I'm seeing people at bus stops. And, you know, and I realize... I realize that people absolutely, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing parts of conversations as I'm walking, you know, by these bus stops. And I realize that some people don't even have a clue as to what's going on. I'm serious. People do not have a clue as to what's going on, which is really scary. You know, pardon me. I got to take some water here. Hold on. <clears throat> well, that didn't help, did it? <laughs> I'm just going to I'm going to work right through it, folks. I notice that a lot of people don't know and don't have a clue and probably don't want to have a clue as to what's going on. There's just no clue whatsoever. And parts of the conversation that I here really reflects the ignorance that people have 
And it's not, I mean, it's not so bad to ignore stuff in certain cases, but um, folks, every minute of every day, there's something changing and your personal rights are being taken away. And if people don't pay attention to that, you're going to wake up one day uh, in, in a country that that has fascist ideas and and militarized police on the streets and federal protective services all over the wait a minute you have that now <laughs> okay i find it odd that people cannot understand this this we are no longer in the united states of america we are no longer in the united states of america we're not we're in a we're in a fascist dictatorial country with a president who's ruling by edict. I said this over a year ago on this very program that we have a president ruling by edict. Folks, he's a dictator. Do you understand me now? Do you get where I'm going with this? If not, you got a problem. If not, there is a huge problem, okay? And I really, really think that you should be paying more attention to what's going on. Hey, that's my two cents worth. But what is your rights and your liberties and your security in this country worth? Seriously. It's a good question, isn't it? You can go to Free America Radio on Facebook, post anything you like. If you're not able to, let me know, please. Or you can send me a private email to freeamericaradio at usa.com. Radio at usa.com. Now, <clears throat> if... I'm just going to put this out here. If people were actually paying attention to what was going on around them, I don't think we'd be in the situation that we are in this country. What do you think? Okay. If you're in the Spreaker chat, please let me know. Or if the Spreaker chat isn't working, please let me know that too. If we actually paid attention, or if others, other people other than myself and many hundreds of others like myself, excluding us, if people actually paid attention to what was going on, do you think we'd be in the situation that we're in right now? Do you? I don't think so. Actually, the only way that people can pay attention is if they'd look back in history and take a look at what was happening back then and really look at what's happening right now because history is repeating itself and it is becoming a lot less secure in this country. Personal security is no longer a viable option when it comes to what the government wants to do to you. Unless you are unless you are with those going out to Washington DC on May 16th, 2014. Unless you're with those that are going to go around their own capitals of their own states and rally support to kick out those corrupt individuals. Even if you're the only one near the Capitol building with a bullhorn and some signs. You don't need a permit to do anything, folks. It's your First Amendment right, freedom of uh, the press, freedom of speech, and freedom of expression. Your permit is the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the United States of America. And if those criminals in your state capitals cannot understand that, nor the criminals in Washington, D.C. cannot understand that, 
then they are the ones with the problem. And the problem they have is that they don't give a crap about your rights. That's the big deal for them. Anyway, like I said, I was going to lighten up. So let me lighten up for you. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let me take the next few minutes of this segment and ask you a question. Hey, how's the economy? If the economy is so great, go to Free America Radio on Facebook. Scroll on down. You'll see if the, if the economy is so great, explain this. Tough times are just around the corner. J.C. Penney, Macy's, Albertsons to close stores. And this is from investmentwatchblog.com. Okay. I, I don't... Folks, I'm not one to just instill fear in anybody. I'm here to try to show you both sides of a situation. People are saying, well, the economy is really good. No, it's not. Stores are closing. JCPenney's is closing. Other stores are closing. Why? Because the economy sucks. There was a music store here in Reno, Nevada. And after 54 years in operation, they have to close. Why? Competition, the economy, Obamacare. Name it. Name it. Tough times are just around the corner. J.C. Penney's, Macy's, Albertsons to close stores and cut thousands of jobs. Best Buy plummets 30% after uh, abysmal holiday sales. And this is from yesterday. J.C. Penney to close 33 stores, cut 2,000 jobs. J.C. Penney company said on Wednesday... It would close 33 stores and cut 2,000 jobs as part of its effort to return to profitability. Chief Executive Myron Ullman said in a statement, the action addresses a strategic priority to improve the profitability of our stores, end quote. Penny is the second major U.S. Re retailer in as many weeks to announce layoffs, last week, Macy said it was eliminating 2,500 jobs. Those cut will be offset over time as a retailer plans to add positions to its online business, leaving overall staffing levels unchanged at around 175,000. Okay, so you can go to investmentwatchblog.com. The link is on Free America Radio right there. On Facebook, my question to you is real, real simple before we go to break here. My question to you is really, really simple. If someone tells you that the economy is good, okay, why are you seeing all of these layoffs? Why? Why are you seeing all of this happening? Okay? I don't know. Honestly, folks, I do not know. Honestly, I don't. I'll be back right after this. Hey there, I'm Big Tiny. I'm the host of Big Tiny's Always and More. And we're playing music that you just love to hear from the 50s to the 90s. So check us out Monday through Friday and see what we're playing right here on Springer.com. Free Talk Live. When you call a government bureaucracy... More often than not, the person who you talk to will not know the answer to your question, but they'll tell you they think they know who the person is that has the answer, and they pass will pass the buck. you, pass the buck to that other person, and if they happen to pick up the phone, they'll usually pass on the buck, or you'll leave a voicemail and never hear back from anybody. Right. I mean, I, I wasn't being rude at the PSA at all. I was, mm -hmm. You know, I, the third person I talked to, she was getting pretty hot under the collar. It's like, you know, what are you being so angry for? I'm just asking regular questions any person would. 
Well, she's probably upset that she had to pick up her phone and talk to one of the little peons like yeah, you. She's probably annoyed at uh, her underlings who actually gave you her phone number and let you get through to her. Yeah, that's probably the case. She's wants, She just wants to play solitaire, and you interrupted her uh, her game, or she just wants to surf <laughs> on the internet, and uh, you, you just ruined her day. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Join the National Down Syndrome Society's My Great Story campaign to honor and celebrate the amazing stories of the 400,000 Americans with Down Syndrome. If you have Down Syndrome, tell us about your achievements, dreams, and aspirations. If you know someone who has Down Syndrome, tell us how they've inspired you. Visit ndss.org slash stories to share your great story. Folks, how you doing? This is the Views Express Live. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back. Are you good? Are you smiling? It's Friday. It's, uh, yeah, what can I say about Friday that you haven't already heard? I was talking to somebody earlier today, and they said it's their Monday. I'm like, really? <laughs> uh, I almost said that sucks for you, but I decided to be nice. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> yeah, I'm kind of like that. I'm a little sarcastic, folks. <laughs> uh, just a little. Just, just a little. <clears throat> hey, let's impeach uh, Nancy Pelosi, shall we? Let's kick her out of office. She said, and I quote, Obamacare captures the spirit of our founders, unquote. Nancy Pelosi is an idiot. Nancy Pelosi is an idiot. Okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Just, just said, putting it out there, all right? I don't know, folks. Don't know. I, um... Uh, you know, I, I look at it this way. If we have politicians that obviously do not know what the Constitution says, we got a problem, okay? We got a huge, huge problem. The um, I'm going to share, I just shared a, a link or a, a picture on uh, Free America Radio on Facebook. I'd like you to go take a look at it. I'm right now sharing a video as well, if my tablet would like to work right now. Um, and it says from WikiLeaks, that's, you know, WikiLeaks, the TPP transnational legal regime would cover 12 countries initially and encompass 40% of global GDP and one third of the world trade. The environment chapter has long been sought by journalists and environmental groups. The released text dates from the chief negotiators summit in Salt Lake City, Utah on 19 through 24 of November, 2013. What's that tell you? That's from the Next News Network. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's just do this, folks. Let's go off the cuff here, shall we? <clears throat> I'm looking at the United States as being one big giant toilet. It's a melting pot of other countries and nationalities. No, folks, it's a giant freaking toilet. That President Obama, this, this puppet in the suit at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C., is flushing down the toilet. Okay, The United States of America 
in essence, as far as the Constitution is concerned and the rule of law is concerned, is totally and absolutely at the edge of going into the freaking abyss. And you folks, the ones that are just sitting around going, hey man, what, what, can I watch the football game? You people are just letting it happen. You folks are just walking away and just throwing your hands in the air and uh, like you just don't care. And you are letting it happen. I don't know about you, but I won't. And I'm doing everything I can right now to uh, do shows every day and to, and to get people to understand what's going on and to... Uh, to uh, Again, show people who's pushing the buttons and pulling the handles. Who's behind the curtain? Who's, who's you know, laying all this out? First of all, you have to remember this, folks. Psychological operations. Okay? Go look that up. It's called PSYOPs. It's part of the military-industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about in 1961. So... Think about this, folks. You're having the government of, that should be, I should say, of, by, and for the people, which is only of, by, and for the corporations, getting up in your face every morning on the state-run media saying, hey, this is what we're doing. We're doing the Trans-Pacific Partnership, because we want to rule the world in commerce. We're doing this NAFTA. We're doing GATT. We're doing uh, the Colombian Free Trade Agreement. We're doing uh, all of these things to help you and your commerce. No. A Spanish company, I believe, bought the Trans-Texas Corridor. Going from the going from the Gulf of Mexico, actually in the Mexican uh, in Mexico on the east coast, in the Gulf of Mexico, all the way up to Canada through Texas, they bought that in Texas. Now, are the other states going to go along with it? I don't, I don't know if they haven't. They probably have already because of certain negotiations that are going on behind the scenes. But we have these situations going on in our country and people are too damn concerned about Kanye West. Saying that he wants to leave the country. Bye. We're seeing all these rich people. I say rich and I incorporate a lot of the actors in that one, such as the uber-liberal Sean Penn and the uber-fascist dictator, or I don't even want to call him a dictator, he's a Marxist, Harvey Weinstein, who is going to put out a movie bashing the NRA and hopefully getting rid of the Second Amendment. I don't know if that's a ploy to sell movie tickets or not, but th he's an asshat. Thank you, Joe Peggs. There is nothing, there is nothing that is positive about what's going on in the country right now. Nothing at all, period. End of sentence. Nothing. We've got people discussing politics like I do, discussing the New World Order, how we have to defend ourselves against it, and, and, and I'm showing you each and everything that I can bring to the table and show you. But then we have experts saying a couple of years ago, three years ago, that the explosion over there in Fukushima is going to kill everybody on the planet. You know... <clears throat> So, where are your priorities? Okay, where are your priorities? Okay, if your priorities are not with taking care of your family and protecting them against the criminals in Washington, D.C., 
pack your bags and leave the country. And if you don't, I'll help you pack. I mean, we've got crazy people in California giving law licenses to illegal immigrants. You hear that story? Now, there is a lot of things going on. Obama gave a speech today about what he's going to do about, you know, the NSA, the metadata. But basically, from what I've heard, he's saying that there's going to be reform in the NSA, but he's not going to stop the surveillance. Really? You're not going to stop the surveillance, but you're going to reform it? President Obama's speech Friday outlined new changes to national intelligence gathering practices, but it left out a lot of specifics. This is NBC Politics. Dot MSNBC, or excuse, excuse me, NBC Politics. Dot NBC News. Dot com. While the proposals would reduce some of the. Uh, latitude given to the national security agency in the name of homeland security they will <clears throat> will they be enough to i gotta increase the font here folks will they be enough to us as, as uh, what is that a s s u a g e what's Congress's role in approving or implementing the president's plan. And what does this mean for irked foreign allies? Here are five questions, five big questions left in the wake of his proposal. Who will store the metadata? Perhaps the biggest news from Obama's speech was his call for the U.S. government to no longer house the bulk data of phone records or meta metadata. And give that to another entity. See, it's still going to happen. The rub, however, is that even the president doesn't know what that other entity should be. In his speech, Obama recognized that assessing the records through phone and internet companies could raise new privacy concerns. And he said forming an entirely new third-party organization could create legal ambiguities. You see where that's going, folks? Number two, will Congress act? Obama also called for Congress's cooperation in reforming these NSA programs. Quote, I am open to working with Congress to ensure that we build a broad consensus of how to move forward and am confident that we can shape an approach that meets our security needs while upholding the civil liberties of every American, unquote. That's like saying, look, there's a dark room. I'm sure there's a light switch somewhere, but we've got to figure out where it is. Number three, will the Supreme Court act before Congress does? It's looking like the U.S. Supreme Court could rule on the constitutionality of the NSA's metadata program in the next couple of years. In December, U.S. District Court Judge Richard Leone, appointed by George W. Bush, said that the program was probably unconstitutional. But when two weeks later, but then two weeks later, another federal judge, William H. Pauley III, appointed by Bill Clinton, said it was legal. It will take some time before the issue gets to the high court, however. Number four, will foreign leaders and countries react? A significant portion of Obama's remarks addressed the complaints of foreign leaders like Germany's Angela Merkel and Brazil's Dilma Rousseff about the NSA's international spying. While the president suggested that all countries gather intelligence, quote, there is a reason why Blackberries and iPhones are not allowed in the White House Situation Room, unquote. 
he stressed that the United States would use its data collection programs only for counterterrorism, counterproliferation, and troop protection activities. <clears throat> and he emphasized that the federal government would only spy on foreign leaders when there is a, quote, compelling national security purpose, unquote. Does this a usage, A-S-U-A-G-E, I don't know how to pronounce that word, folks, and I'm an English major, I don't know. Um, basically, will it, you know, calm the nerves of a skeptical public, I'm assuming. Farther removed from the 9-11 terrorist attacks, the American public has grown more skeptical about surveillance programs and their risks to privacy. In December of 2001, just months after 9-11, an NBC News Wall Street Journal poll found 55% of Americans saying that they were more worried about uh, more worried that the U.S. wouldn't go far enough in monitoring the activities and communications of potential terrorists living in the country versus just 31% who were more worried that those things would go too far in violating privacy rights. But now those numbers are reversed. According to July to a July 2013 NBC Wall Street Journal poll, 56% were more worried that the government would go too far compared to 36% who were more worried that it wouldn't go far enough. Okay, folks. Can you say BS? Can you call it what it is? The president said, well, we're going to reform NSA. You, you know what that means? That means they got their hands caught in a cookie jar, so now they have to shut off all information going to the public. That's what that means. We're only going to fight. We're only going to surveil people. Uh, what, what do you say about, uh, you know, terrorists or, you know. You know. When the Mayak report came out, a couple of years ago, and, and, and several reports came out uh, over the past several years stating that any returning veteran, any Ron Paul supporter, any patriot, any constitutionalist, anybody that is uh, pro-liberty is a terrorist within the borders of the United States. That would mean you and me, folks. That would mean you and me. So... I call that BS, Mr. President, because you're full of it. That's just the way it is. I don't know what else to say. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, yeah. The president is lying to you. He always has, he always will. And I wonder what those people who said, oh, he's going to pay my house payment, he's going to pay my car payment, I wonder what they're saying now. Are you, are you... Are you supporting him now? And by the way, the, the woman, the Obama phone lady, yeah, she was on Alex Jones a couple of times. And guess what? She's now convinced that this president is wrong. Okay, period. So there you go. You know. Hey, if you want to check out the website, you can. FreeAmericaRadio.us you go to the sponsor's site, those numbers are going to change at the end of the month. Please be sure, if you'd like to sponsor the show, to email me, and I will tell you how to do that. FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. Thank you very much, and I shall return after this. Tune in to The Views Express Live, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on RadioKahuna.com.
joining us today on RadioKahuna.com. We so appreciate having you in. This is Steve from Claire Normal Talk Radio. I'm also here, one of the personalities on Radio Kahuna. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy having you people in. Thank you so very much. Hey, we're growing all over the planet by leaps and bounds. People from all over the planet are coming in and listening. But there's not enough. It's not enough. We need more. We're asking for your help. Tell a friend. Tell two friends. Tell ten friends. Just tell them this. Tell them they'll get laid. Ah, come on in. Enjoy the surf. The sets are fine. Steve from Claire Normal Talk Radio and Radio Kahuna. Thank you very much. Dream that you dream of. Dream Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome back. Yay! It's the Views Express Live right here for the Friday, the 17th of January 2014. How are ya? How are you? Are ya doing good? Awesome. Here's something else, folks, and uh, pardon me while I use my tablet to get to this next article. In the meantime, while it's coming up on this slow piece of crap, uh, <laughs> it's one of those little cheapy tablets. But anyway, uh, I have a question for you that I really would like your answer to because I'm very, very concerned about your liberty and freedom. If someone came to the door... Actually, this happened to me. Someone came to the door, knocked on my door, and it was a, a pollster, apparently, and asked me if I had insurance. Literally. I was just wondering if you had insurance. Yes, I do. And he oh, okay. And he said a few more things and walked away. And... My question to you is, what would you do if somebody walked to your door, knocked on your door, and, and asked you that question? Interesting. Let me go here. I go to NewYorkTimes.com. Supreme Court will consider whether police need warrants to search cell phones. You heard that right, folks. New York Times. Supreme Court will consider whether police need warrants to search cell phones. The Supreme Court on Friday agreed to hear a pair of cases about whether the police need a warrant to search the cell phones of people they arrest, presenting a major test of the meaning of the Fourth Amendment in the digital age. The court has long allowed warrantless searches in connection with arrests, saying they are justified by the need to find weapons and to prevent the destruction of evidence. The question for the justices in the new cases is whether the, potential, uh, the potentially uh, vast amounts of data held on smartphones warrants a different approach under the Fourth Amendment, which bars unreasonable searches. The lower courts are divided. In one of the cases... The court agreed to hear the federal appeals court in Boston in May threw out evidence gathered after the police there inspected the call log of a drug dealer's rudimentary flip phone. Quote, today, many Americans store their most personal papers and effects in electronic format on a cell phone carried on person. Unquote. Judge Norman H. Stahl wrote for a divided three-judge panel uh, of the court, quote, The information is, by and large, of a highly personal nature. Photos, videos, written and audio messages, text, email, and voicemail, contacts, calendar appointments, web search, and bre uh, browsing history, purchases, and financial and medical records, unquote. He added, when the full appeals court declined to hear or rehear the case, Judge, uh, Chief Judge Send Sandra L. Lynch said she hoped the justices would soon address the, quote, very important and very complex, unquote, questions presented by it. Quote, the only Supreme Court, only the Supreme Court can finally resolve these issues, and I hope it will, unquote, she wrote. In urging... 
the Supreme Court to hear the case, United States versus Worry, number 13212, Solicitor General uh, Donald B. Varelli Jr. said, Courts have long endorsed inspection of anything carried by the person they arrest, including wallets, calendars, pocket diaries, address books, and papers. In February, a state appeals court in California applied the principles established in those cases to allow a search of a smartphone containing much more information than the one seized in Boston. That case arose from the arrest of David L. Riley, who was pulled over for, uh, over for having an expired auto registration. The police found loaded guns in the car, and on inspection of Mr. Riley's smartphone, entries they associated with a street gang. More comprehensive search... Of the phone led to information that linked Mr. Riley to a shooting. He was later convicted of attempted murder and sentenced to 15 years to life. His lawyers, get this, his lawyers asked the Supreme Court to hear the case, Riley versus California, number 13 132, to determine how the Fourth Amendment applies to a device, quote, that happens to include a phone, unquote. But, in, but is, in essence, a computer, quote, capable of storing a virtually limitless amount of information, unquote. They argued that a warrant should be required, quote, before allowing the police to rummage through the digital contents of such a device, unquote. In agreeing Friday to hear the case, the justices said they would decide a narrower question than the one proposed by Mr. Riley's lawyer. That of whether evidence admitted at Mr. Riley's trial was obtained by a search that violated his Fourth Amendment rights. The court on Friday also agreed to hear a third case, Lane v. Franks, number 13-483, on the First Amendment rights of public employees. It concerns Edward Lane, a former director of a youth program at a public community uh, college in Alabama. <sighs> yeah. Mr. Lane was subpoenaed to testify at a corruption trial of a state legislature accused of accepting paychecks from the program without doing substantial work for it. The legislator, Susan or Suzanne Schmidt, or Smits, Smits, Schmitz, there we go, if I can say it correctly, S C H M I T Z, was convicted and sentenced to 30 months in prison. Mr. Lane was fired, and he sued the president of the college, Steve Franks, saying that his termination was retaliation for his testimony and a violation of his First Amendment right to free speech. Mr. Franks said he let Mr. Lane go for financial reasons unrelated to his testimony. What's that mean? That's kind of vague, isn't it? The Federal Appeals Court in Atlanta said it was unnecessary to decide who was right because public employees have no First Amendment protection in any event for statements they make as part of their official duties. Listen to that again, folks. This is important for your job, too. The Federal Appeals Court in Atlanta said it was unnecessary to decide who was right because... Public employees have no First Amendment protections in any event for statements they make as part of their official duties. How does that make you feel in your job, folks? You have, you have, I don't care where you're at, you have no First Amendment rights when you clock in. This is why I advocate pushing the issue of the Constitution in your businesses you work for. Your protected rights, God-given, constitutionally protected rights, are not suspended when you clock in, period. So you better go shove the Constitution in your boss's face. Continuing, since the uh, since quote the record fails to establish that Lane testified as a citizen on a matter of public concern unquote the appeals court said in an unsigned opinion quote he cannot state a claim for retaliation under the First Amendment. Other 
Courts have said that subpoenaed testimony is protected by the First Amendment. Quote, society has a strong interest in facilitating sworn testimony in public cor- corruption investigations, lest the corruption continue to unchecked, Qu- uh, unquote. Mr. Lane's lawyers told the justices in a petition urging them to hear the case. Quote, public employees have vital information relating to fraud, waste, and abuse in government. If the First Amendment fails to protect them, in other words, if it fails to protect a person who is working in a job, when they speak out, if the First Amendment fails to protect them when they speak out, there is a substantial risk that they will be deterred from coming forward, unquote. So there you go, folks. Your First Amendment right. Let's discuss that for a minute, shall we, before the top of the hour break. Your rights do not, or excuse me, first of all, A, your rights don't come from the government, period. B, the Constitution that our founding fathers put together in the Bill of Rights that they put together along with it, ratified December 15th, 1791, protects everything that you say, period. And you, I don't care where you work, you work part-time at a shoe store on the mall, or you work at a big corporation, you are protected by the Constitution, period. The policies of those businesses do not override the rule of law of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the United States of America, period. And if you say that's your opinion, well, it is. Prove me wrong. Well, you know, it's a private company, and they can do whatever they want. If they're not following the Constitution, they're fascist, and therefore they are against the law, and therefore anything that they do against you that suppresses your freedoms protected under the Constitution, they are operating illegally. I will tell that to a judge. As a matter of fact... I want you judges out there right now in America. I want, if anybody knows a judge, send this to them. Tell them what I said. That the policies of a private company in the United States of America do not override the rule of law in the, from the Constitution of the United States of America, period. Or word it any way you want, but that's the essence. So I want all you judges out there, all you attorneys, constitutional attorneys out there, to tell me where I'm wrong. I'm not. Prior to 1871, the Constitution protected the civil liberties of every single person in America at that time. And it does not stop. Well, why do you say prior to 1871? That is... When, that is when the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and a few other big people who actually run the government through, you know, their own little puppets created the corporation of the United States. Go look it up. And don't get lawyers. No, no, no. Attorneys, lawyers, whatever. Don't tell me I'm wrong on that because I've done my history work. Did you? Are you looking at all of this stuff? No, you're not. You're just taking it from what you've learned in the last eight years of your law school. Papers coming out of Harvard, coming out of Yale, coming out of Columbia University say the same thing. So I don't want to hear it from you. I don't want to hear any negative stuff coming out of you unless you want to purposely in your heart tell me I'm wrong. You better do your homework, and you better put it on the table of debate, or I ain't talking to you. Don't waste my time. I know it. Prior to 1871, the Constitution of the United States of America and the Bill of Rights protects everybody. Okay? Freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, Shall I go on, or do you know the Constitution better than I do? And I'm a regular educated individual. 
Seriously. <clears throat> now. I'm going to go here. I want to go here because it's very important that we understand what this whole system is. Okay? The United States of America... The United States of America was born out of the concept of freedom and liberty and security, both on a personal level and a, uh, a level of protecting the, 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 the country from foreign invaders. This is what it was built upon. And I know there's probably other things as well in there. And that's fine. I'm just giving you an, uh, just a, a Reader's Digest version of it. But look at it this way. You have your own personal rights that you know yourself are true for you. Am I wrong? Everybody knows that they have a perspective of things that is their own. Are they right? Are they wrong? Are they misled? Are they misinformed? Have they overlooked something? I tell people straight up, if I'm wrong about something, I'll tell you. But I'm not necessarily wrong about things. I just may have overlooked something that I didn't check out before. I'm okay with that. I just go back and look at it and go, oh, okay, well, let's add that to the mix and see where it goes. Okay? A lot of people have talked to me, like, like I said before, the policies of any bit of business do not override the rule of law of the Constitution of the United States. And people argue with me, yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Have you read the Commerce Clause? Seriously. If you think that your policies and your business with your employees overrides the con their constitutionally protected rights, you better close your doors right now, buddy. You better pack it up and move it to China, Germany, any place else other than America. Because in America, we the people rule by the, we the people rule by the rule of law of the Constitution prior to 1871. Period. Don't like it? Pack your bags and get the hell out of the country. And we'll set up businesses that follow the Constitution, that follow common sense, that follow the rule of law. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't like the way that I talk. All I can say, all I can say is enjoy cuz you're I'm not going to stop talking this way. The NSA can kiss my you know what. The CIA can be spying on me all day long. Fine. Let me show you how, let me show you that you're number one. You can imagine what finger I'm holding up. I'll be back right after this. Late Night in the Midlands is an alternative media that covers the truth, theory, and fact that the lamestream media won't talk about. We cover everything from the known and the unknown, the normal and the paranormal, the government lies and the government ties and even their thrive. We tell what's coming, what's going, whether it be politics or archaeologists. We have an amazing fan base, and our shows are all archived to be heard millions of times more. So tell your friends, your family, and anybody you care about about LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Become a member and be informed.
Get your morning started with the morning brew on 92.6 The Blitz. Music from the 60s, 70s, and more. The Blitz 92.6. Go to Radio Rock the Blitz. Blogspot.com. Free Talk Live. You give someone an ounce of liberty and they'll go around abusing it and harming everyone else with it. If we legalize guns... People will um, be shooting people everywhere. Right. If you legalize prostitution, people will be having sex on the street corners. <laughs> if you legalize drugs, we'll have heroin vending machines in the streets. We've heard it all on Free Talk Live. <laughs> they take it to the most absurd, illogical extremes. And you're absolutely right, Alexander. It's okay for them to have freedom. Yeah, you can give them a gun. They won't go around shooting people. But watch out with their neighbor because you give them a gun, they'll go around in a rampage around right. the city killing everyone. Oh, oh, but yes, they can be trusted, and apparently the government can be trusted, too, because magically, oh, yeah. magically, we only elect the best of the best, the cream of the crop. The bureaucrats that are administering <laughs> these programs are the upper echelon of society, the most trustworthy individuals. Oh, yeah. Sometimes when I squint, I swear I can see a halo above their heads. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Are you tired of the mainstream media? The media that is so biased, you wouldn't even let your dog listen to it. Well, there's an answer. Angel Club. On Radio Just listen to her fans. One hell of a writer. I've read a considerable amount of her articles and I'm quite impressed. Until Angel, my life was void of meaning. I want to thank you for saving my goldfish from drowning. I love Angel Clark's honesty and her down to earth concern about the people. She is very dedicated. Angel, we need you. This Angel's a sexy woman. I think she's going to go places, but I don't know why. Ladies and gentlemen, she does a good job. If it wasn't for Angel, you saved his life, and I will be indebted to you forever. Sussex County Angel.com. <laughs> be a part of Angel's Army. Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. on RadioFreedom.us. Free Talk Live. Do you guys have a zombie plan? I'm, I'm just wondering what this country is going to do if we had some sort of apocalypse like that. Like a what zombie are we attack. Do? People coming yeah, out like of the ground, like in Thriller, or, like in, uh, no, in Michael Jackson's like 28 Thriller. Days later, like a virus or something. Oh, okay. I mean, people don't come back to life. Well, now, there are different kinds of zombies out there. <laughs> Now, um, but, well, let me go through the, the, the types of zombies. I mean, you've got the ones that can crawl out of the ground, right? And then she was talking about, like, an infection kind of zombie, mm-hmm. like a la Resident Evil, for instance. So, ideally, if you're going to have to perish at the, the hands of a zombie, which would be the preference? Would you prefer to have your brains eaten, or would you prefer to become one of them? I think I'd rather just die. Um, yeah? Yeah, I'd, the last thing I'd want is, of course, the people you split up with, and I'm talking my wife and my child, I'm coming back, I'm wanting to eat Laura's brains. <laughs> It's bad. It's bad. (laughs) Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Folks, this is The Views Express Live, and I am your host, Reverend Wayne S. Pierce, right here for the 17th of January, 2014. I hope you're having fun on this Friday. As some of you know, I didn't have the Wayne S. Pierce show earlier today, so this is a combined show. I'm kind of toning it down just a, just a tad. <laughs> 
Just a little. Uh, yeah, just a little. Hey, I had an in- interesting conversation with someone on Facebook after I posted a picture of something. And uh, what they, you know, they obviously didn't like to stay on topic of the meme that was in the uh, picture. So they went off on all sorts of stuff. Go to news.cnet. Dot com Intel cutting workforce as PC growth slows. The chipmaker will reduce its workforce by 5% in the shadow of a shrinking PC market. Intel plans to cut about 5% of its global workforce, the company said in a statement Friday. That comes to roughly 5,000 people. 5,000 out of the total workforce of 107,000, Reuters said. Quote, Intel will be aligning uh, resources to meet the needs of the business this year. This will include targeted workforce reduction in addition to realignment of resources, unquote, Intel said in a statement provided to CNET. The statement continued, quote, we will expect that employment will come down by approximately 5% this year. We are not announcing a layoff. When we talk about reduction of the workforce, there are a number of things that we can, uh, that can happen. It could include redeployments, voluntary programs, retirements, and um, through attrition, unquote. Though Intel reported a rise in net income in Thursday's fourth quarter earnings report, there were also some red flags. Folks, you know, JCPenney's, Macy's, uh, Best Buy and all that, they're laying off. And the economy is good. Uh, Think again, folks. CEO Brian uh, Raznick, or, uh, yeah, Raznick, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, sorry, Brian, said the enterprise, a.k.a. corporate market, was weak. Quote, enterprise fell short of our expectations for the fourth quarter in the year... Uh, as we overestimated the rate of recovery among corporate buyers, unquote, he said during the earnings conference call. And when addressing the delay in starting the Fab 42 plant in Arizona, he also had some less than encouraging remarks about PCs. Quote, we have to start construction projects three years roughly in advance. They're uh, very complex. If you go back three years ago, our view of the PC industry, PC growth, was much more robust than what has played out, unquote. And research firm Gartner uh, reported a slowing PC market in the fourth quarter earlier this month. Yeah. I don't know what else to tell you, folks. Oh, the economy is just fantastic. Obama's doing really well at creating jobs, isn't he? No. That right there with the layoffs reported to uh, come to Macy's, JCPenney's, blah, 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 all those, Best Buy included. If there are layoffs in Best Buy. That's going to be somewhere in the vicinity of about 15,000 to 20,000 people laid off. Folks, we already have 92 million people that are unemployed in this country. That's almost a third of the population of the United States. What kind of person says that the economy is good when you have a third, almost a third of the population of the United States unemployed? Hey, the economy's great. Yeah, maybe for companies overseas. So many things are going on. I want to give a big shout out to the one and only Christopher John Taylor. Over at HTLA973.com. Christopher John Taylor over at HTLA973.com. Check out his shows. He's got Crash Talk. He's got uh, Film 101. Check it out. HTLA973.com. Big shout out to him. 
Also, a big shout out to Nick Tucker over at Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook and distortedreality.podbean.com. Check that out as well. And go check out The BK Factor over on Revolution Radio over at freedomslips.com. Check out those shows as well. Always happy to promote people. Promotions on my show are absolutely, positively, 100% free. Yeah, it doesn't cost you a thing. Unless you want to sponsor the show, then hey, you can do that too. Go to freeamericaradio.us. Check out the sponsors page. Those rates right now, folks, on that page are good till the end of January. After that, I'm going to take that page down, redo it, find some other things, you know, and help you save more money on your advertising dollar. So, but you can still sponsor the show. If you have any questions about that or any questions whatsoever, uh, no question is off limits. Ask, and I will tell you. And if I don't know, I will tell you that too. Free America Radio at USA.com. Free America Radio at USA.com. And at the end of the month, the email will change. So if you're on the Spreaker side of things and you uh, see the website and the email, uh, the website's not going to change, but the email's going to change. So take note. Okay. You can also go to freeamericaradio.us, go to the store, you can buy some merchandise, Liberty and Freedom Network. Yes, that's also part of the Free America Radio Network. And uh, hey, help out Free America Radio Network, okay? So thank you. You can donate if you like as well. There's a donate button there. And thank you very much for all that. Your support is very much appreciated. Yes, thank you. So, as Elvis would say, thank you, thank you very much. Anyway, (sighs) what do we talk about now, folks? Oh, I got something. Let me me reach over here to my tablet, and I will bring up something I just saw during the break. It is, uh, it is something that is, uh, well, it goes hand in hand with with what I was going to talk about at the bottom of the hour, and that is uh, Google's uh, purchase of the robotic division of Boston Dynamics. We will see Terminator t- style robots on the streets, folks. That's just the way it is. From future uh, f- futurity. Futurity, I think is how you pronounce it. F U T U R I T Y dot O R G. Says here arm sensors let humans and robots work side by side. There's a video there if you'd like to check it out at Futurity. Futurity, I think is how you pronounce it. Please correct me if I'm wrong, .org, Uh, futurity.org. It's not uncommon to see large, fast-moving robots on manufacturing floors. Humans seldom work next to them because of safety reasons. Some jobs, however, require people and robots to work together. For example, a person hanging a car door on a hinge uses a lever to guide a robot carrying the door. The power-assisting device sounds practical, but isn't easy to use. Quote, it turns out, uh, it turns into a constant tug of war between the person and the robot, unquote, explains Billy Gallagher, a recent Georgia Tech doctoral graduate in robotics who led a project to create a system that allows a robot to anticipate a human's movements and correct its own. Interesting. Quote, both react to each other's forces when working together. The problem is that a person's muscles stiffness is never constant, and a robot doesn't always know how to correctly react, unquote. For example, as human operators shift the lever forward or backward, the robot recognizes the command and moves appropriately. But when they want to stop the movement and hold the lever in place, 
People tend to stiffen and contract muscles on both sides of their arms. This creates a high level of co-contraction. Quote, the robots become confused. It doesn't know whether the force is purely another command that should be amplified or bounced force due to muscle co-contraction, unquote, says June Uedi Gallagher's advisor, a professor in the Woodruff School of Mechanical Engineering. Quote, the robots react regardless, unquote. The robot responds to that bounced force, creating vibration. The human operators also react, creating more force by stiffening their arms. The situation and vibrations become worse. Like they said, it was a tug of war. <sighs> yes. Google bought the robotic division. Or Google? Yeah, Google. Or DARPA. Anyway, doesn't matter because the former head of DARPA is now the head of technology over at Google. That would be Regina Dugan. Anyway, Google has robots. DARPA has robots. Doesn't matter, they both work together. So, what's that tell you? You know, you probably know someone in the military and you probably know someone who is, you know, who flies drones, unmanned aerial vehicles. And you probably have asked them, how does that affect you when you know that you're shooting someone or dropping bombs somewhere? And even they have a problem with it. So imagine just for a moment, folks, you're in a room in a virtual reality type contraption with the Google goggles on and the VR stuff all over you and the pads and the knee pads and the shoulder and chest pads and the gloves and the handles and the things and the... You're going to be walking a robot all over the place. Basically, Avatar. Think about it, folks. How would you feel if you were recruited to do some experimentation on robots they put you in a room they strap you up with the gloves and the chest protectors and the, everything right and then they say put these on and they put this virtual reality or these goggles on you that you can't see out but there's screens in front of you Screens, not eye holes. Screens. And you're walking. You're walking on a... On a platform which moves in every single direction you want to go. You want to move left, you turn left, you walk. And you're on this like treadmill type thing. But it goes all over the place. You're in this virtual world, or is it? You're in this robot, you're in this, this virtual world, but you're walking and you recognize some of the things that you're seeing through your screens or on your screens in your goggles, right? You're walking inside of a robot and you're making the robot the android whatever it is move seriously yeah you want to know more about all that you want to know more yeah Go to 2045.com, 2045.com. Also look at all the writings from Ray Kurzweil. Oh yeah, go check it out. He taught, he's a transhumanist. He talks about being a cyborg. Kurzweil, you may have heard that name. You've seen the musical instruments, the keyboards with his name on the back of it, Kurzweil. That's him, folks. 
Yes. What can I say? What can I say? I'll be back in two minutes. And will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Ah, damn politicians. My mother always told me this country would be screwed if the liberals had their way. The only sanity I get is when I listen to Jeff Wagner on the conservative voice. Only on the conservative radio network. This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce, and I want to tell you of a DVD that I have watched. It's a very interesting one. It's a film by Alex Jones. It's called Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement. For the new world order, a world government is just the beginning. Once in place, they can engage their plan to exterminate 80% of the world's population while enabling the quote-unquote elites to live forever with the aid of advanced technology. For the first time, crusading filmmaker Alex Jones reveals their secret plan for humanity's extermination. Operation Endgame. That's Endgame by Alex Jones. Get it at Infowars.com or PrisonPlanet.com. Hey, folks, how are you? How are you, folks? This is the 17th of January, 2014. I am your host, Reverend Wayne S. Pierce. How are you? You can email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. Okay? Go to freeamericaradio.us to check out the page, look at the sponsors page, look at the blogs, look at everything else that I have there. Again, if you have questions, email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. Yes. I'm going to go in a totally different direction. For those that... uh, uh, didn't hear the Wayne S. Pierce show earlier today. That's because I didn't do it. So, duh. Um, I'm combining the shows today. That's why I'm here. Uh, just talking about other things as well. Such as from autoworldnews.com. Chimpanzees use hand gestures to communicate. Did you know that? Did, did, you, did you know that? Chimpanzees are able to communicate with one another through hand gestures, according to new study conducted by researchers at Georgia State University. The university's language research center studied how two language-trained chimps were able to communicate with one another through a human experimenter, to find food, according to university press release. Well, Coco and and uh, another uh, orangutan, basically, gorilla, not orangutan, gorilla, uh, speak to their caregivers in sign language. The, 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 the people there taught them sign language. Yeah. Go look on YouTube. Coco the gorilla. Continuing, the chimps use hand gestures to coordinate plans to pursue food hidden for the experiment, according to the press release. Researchers also noticed that the chimps would point to guide the human to the location where the food was. The experimenter did not know where the food was before being shown by the chimp to help accomplish accurate results. Quote, it allows the chimpanzees to communicate information in the manner of their choosing, but also requires them to initiate and to uh, persist in communication, unquote. Language Center researcher Charles Menzel said in a statement according to the press release, the experiment allowed researchers to study chimps in ways that never been done before. It's it's, (laughs) seriously. 
The researchers now believe hand gestures could have been an important, quote, building block towards the evolution of language, unquote, according to the study. Quote, the study adds to our understanding of how well chimpanzees can remember and communicate about their environment, unquote, Menzel said. The project was funded by the Leakey uh, Foundation, the Winter Grin Foundation, National Institutes of Health, and the Economic and Social Research Council, the British Academy, and the Carnegie Trust for the Universities of Scotland and the University of Stirling. By the way, speaking of chimpanzees communicating, there was a moment in Coco, the gorilla's life, when she told, or, or I believe it was her, I'd have to go back and check my notes again, where the caregiver literally had a story about Coco uh, uh, initiating a conversation with her, with, with the caregiver. And she said, Coco said to her that she remembers... Coco remembers when her parents were taken away. She remembers that. There have been other, uh, other pieces of information out there as well, other documents that prove that chimpanzees, that gorillas, that these, what we would consider primates, know how to think, know how to structure, you know, language in the way that they do, as you heard there, and know how to use tools. It's compelling information, but I've also read information pertaining to the fact that the chimpanzees, the orangutans, the gorillas are totally a different species, but replicate, if not... Uh, emulate, if you will, the human processes of doing things. We're almost alike in that regard. But, but, oh, here, here's this little bit of information I found out as well. Scientists and doctors and veterinar you know, veterinarians have looked at, after the question was raised, why don't orangutans, why don't gorillas, why don't chimpanzees talk like humans? Because they're closely related to the humans. Why don't they? They have everything they need to do so, except for posture. You go look at a human who is standing without his knees being locked into place. They're just standing there. They're just there. Look at a side profile of a human that way. Look at a side profile of a gorilla. And you will see. The scientists and doctors have said that the larynx area is not back far enough or structured in such a way that would allow the gorillas or the chimpanzees or the, the orangutans to talk. Okay? Okay. Some of you are probably wondering, well, geez, what about Escape from the Planet of the Apes with Roddy McDowell? I mean, you know, he talked. Well, over time, in that science fiction world, they developed. They evolved. I hate using that word because I don't believe in evolution. They evolved. They progressed. Let's put it that way. So now, how do we look at our little furry, quote-unquote, cousins? How, how, how do we do that? Huh. Compelling information, is it not? Mm hmm? Yeah. Now... Let me ask you a question. Here, here we are. We're in a world. We, we, we're, we're in the United States of America, the melting pot of all societies that have come here to wanting to be free and liberated and secure. All of that. Now, I know far beyond 
my cycle of life here, far beyond my age, I can tell you this much, that uh, not in my lifetime will it ever will I ever see a chimpanzee or an orangutan or a gorilla talk to me as if I'm talking to you. There have been studies and research on how intelligent are these, uh, you know, creatures. And they found out that, yes, on average, they have a fourth grade education, basically, if, if you will. Their minds are, are in that. And it's, ama- it's just amazing to me. It's amazing to me that people cannot recognize these, these, these creatures, these, these, these furry animals, if you will, as being sentient beings. Yes, go look that word up, folks. Right now, folks, we are... At the brink of total collapse. As a society, as a culture, as a population upon this planet. And I bring up the aspect of what I just talked about because of the fact that Some people, some, not me, some people believe that we evolved from these creatures that look a whole lot like us. I don't want to call them monkeys. That's like calling a little person a midget. My apologies. And we often wonder, did we? Because they look a lot like us. They, they manage to do things that, that we do. No, I believe that we've... I believe that they are a separate species of... And I'm going to use this term loosely because I don't know any other term to use. Humanoidal creatures. And it's very interesting to to look at all this and to examine it. And people look at me going, man, you're kind of deep in all of this. Well, yeah, because I had someone debate me over creation, creationism and evolution. And I had all the information on my side to prove what I was talking about and The other person had nothing and could not stand on their own two feet, figuratively speaking. So we look at all these experiments, and and here's one of my points in this, and that is this. We look at all these experiments that they're using these, these, these creatures for, Experiments for makeup and for diseases and all of this. And we look at these creatures of the wild and we wonder, my goodness, they could be like us. And we hear the horror stories of people taking chimpanzees home as pets and getting their face ripped off, literally. We hear things that's rare, that is very, very rare. But I also look at information pertaining to the positive things that are happening for the population of these creatures in other countries. And the one person that I, you know, really admire in their attempt to educate people is Dr. Jane Goodall. And I find it incredibly odd that people like you and I and and we find this we criticize those who 
talk about evolution and creation and all this and the other thing. And what do we do? We don't know. So because we don't know something, we criticize something in such a way to where it causes the other person to just like shut up and walk away. We try to shut them down. We can't, but we try. And what happens? People get pissed off. People get all worked out, bent out of shape, all worked up. Okay. Now, the the attempt the attempt by people to i don't know humanize these creatures i think is pathetic i've seen pictures and you can go look this stuff up yourself at startpage.com they have these chimpanzees they have these you know these these you know gorillas they're all in you know clothes and they're riding bikes and they're this and they're that. i think it's pathetic i think what we need to do is we need to leave them alone and let them go about their business let them live ah the bigger point you know i had to come to the bigger point didn't you and it's this we are more concerned about what is coming out of Hollywood and the gossip that you see at the checkout counters in your stores and we are about life that is around us. Well, that's life and I want to hear what my, uh, you know, favorite uh, uh, entertainer says. You're dumb. Okay? Look at how your neighborhood is. Take a microcosm of what real life is like. Go around and talk to your neighbors. Go talk to your neighbors. Seriously. Not right now because you're listening to me, but go talk to your neighbors. If you don't know them, that's a good way of finding out who they are, isn't it? Find out what they do. Have a little party. Have some neighbors over. You know, find out who they are. But then watch how they talk about things. Examine their, their movements, their body language, what they say, how they interact with other people. And you're going to find one valuable little thing. You're going to find a lot that's valuable, but one little thing that I found out when that happened, because I've done that, is the fact that you're going to have certain class of people look at you and go, oh, really? You want me to come over and to a little party you're having? Oh, how quaint. You're going to have those types of people. Then you're going to have the other types of people that are like, hey, is there going to be some beer there? <laughs> you know. Now, I'm not saying that's bad. What I'm saying is certain people who think that they are better than somebody else may not want to show up. My point of all that is this. Don't criticize somebody for what you think they are. You might be surprised that they are nowhere near what you think they are. If a caretaker at a zoo can for over a few years teach a gorilla how to use sign language to communicate you better watch your back because who knows your great 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 grandchildren might be working for one of those gorillas someday I know that's a fanciful idea I know that is probably in the realm of science fiction, 
But is it really? Is it really? I don't know. Could be. Okay, folks. Give me about 30 seconds, or actually give me a little more time than that, and I shall return. Sarasota's home for R&B and soul. The Razorblade Express with Dave the Rave. Photography is an art form, and Adventures in Photography shows you all of the forms of art there is in our world. Spencer Hughes captures the colors and works of natural art in his book, Adventures in Photography. For more information, go to spencerhughesphotography.com. Listen to Angel Clark Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Radio Freedom News Network, RadioFreedom.us. It's time to take our republic back, folks. Brian Bonner, the uncooperative radio show host, will tell you how. Join us for the ride of your life. Using humor and the facts, we will expose the news that the lamestream media refuses to report. The Constitution is a solution, and we can prove it. Listen in and find out what it means to be an uncooperative citizen of these United States. You can find our show at uncooperativeradio.com, and we are rebroadcast on redstatetalkradio.com. What's on your mind? Chances are it's on their mind, too. Check out Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show. Friday evenings at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. Only on Spreaker.com. For the best Southern, classic, and new rock, along with kicking country and R&B, check out Wildcat Radio. Radio. For the Friday night party, the fun begins at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. With local, state, and national news from the Alabama News Network at the top and bottom of every hour. It's Wildcat Radio's Friday Night Party, a division of the Vulcan Internet Broadcast Company. No elitist drivel, no media spin. Logic over emotion, fact over fiction. The home of independent conservative thought. The conservative voice with your host, Jeff Wagner, only on the Conservative Radio Network. Hey, folks, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Hello, how you doing? How you doing there? Are you good? The 17th of January, 2014. It's fun. It's Friday. It's, hey, what can I say? I want to give a big shout out to the one and only Christopher John Taylor over at HTLA973.com. How are you? Are you doing good? Seriously. Free America Radio at USA.com. Free America Radio at USA.com. Go ahead and go to the website, freeamericaradio.us. Hey, thank you. Yes. Um, what else? Hey. Uh, about the last segment, I just want to say that I know that people are smarter than I probably give them credit for. Okay. Okay. I know that there are a majority of people who are dumbed down by our governmental indo- indoctrination institutes called schools and colleges and universities. But I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there a whole lot smarter than I am. Bring it on. Let me know. Free America Radio at USA.com. Free America Radio at USA.com. By the way, at the end of January, 
in a few weeks, that email is going to change. Not the website, the email. So if you would like, here's the email. Free America Radio at unseen.is. That's Free America Radio at unseen.is. Excuse me. Free America Radio at unseen.is. Yes. Fun, 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 fun. Yes, it is wonderful because it's Friday. It is great because tonight, if you'd like, you can come back tonight at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, and we will have, we didn't have it last week, sorry, our apologies. We will, you will listen to, you will hear, however you want to put it, the Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show. I know, I know, that's a long name for a show. The Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show. Go to grabbagshow.weebly.com. Grabbagshow.weebly.com. If you have any questions whatsoever, please ask grabbagshow.com at usa.com grab bag show at usa.com there you go now let me uh oh here we go <laughs> going to uh as soon as my as soon as it comes up here the washington post.com the washington post.com the the East Coast version of, I don't know, I'm just trying to make fun of it. The Washington Post.com national security changes to U.S. surveillance policy in detail. What happens next? President Obama announced a series of changes to U.S. surveillance policies on Friday, but his announcement mark, uh, announcements mark only the start of reform. In some cases, Congress will have to take action. In others, the president has asked the Justice Department and the intelligence community for further recommendations. A breakdown. Changes enacted by Obama. Heads of states... Considered close U.S. allies will now be off limits for electronic surveillance. Yeah, because Merkel and the other guy got pissed off. White House officials said they have already stopped collection on dozens of such targets. Dozens of such targets. Yeah, not hundreds of thousands, but dozens. Number two, whenever the National Security Agency wants to query its database of U.S. phone records, it will have to get permission from a special surveillance court. Let me say that again, folks, because, you know, behind they're not going to go through the justice system and go through the United States Supreme Court or any other court in America. They have a secret court all on their own. Whenever a national security agency wants to query its database of U.S. phone records, it will have to get permission from a special surveillance court. Can you say secret court? Number three, the NSA will also face new limits on how widely it can search its database. Let me say that again. The NSA will also face new limits on how widely it can search its database. Can you say the fox guarding the hen house and trying to explain why six chickens are gone? Changes sought by Obama. Now remember, those were changes enacted by Obama. This is changes sought by Obama. I would like, this is, this is what he would like. The president directed, this is the first one. The president directed the attorney general and intelligence officials to determine how to remove the phone records database from government control while ensuring oh, the NSA can access, it can access to it when certain conditions are met. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me go back up. Whenever the National Security Agency wants to query its database of U.S. phone records, it will have to get permission from a special surveillance court. The president directed the attorney general and intelligence officials to determine how to remove the phone records database from government control while ensuring the NSA can access 
to it, can get access to it when certain conditions are met. Uh, didn't he just enact that? Number two, Obama called on Congress to establish a panel of public advocates who can represent privacy interests before the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. Can you say FISA court? That's the secret court they work with. Number three, the president has instructed U.S. officials to develop new privacy protections for foreigners and to limit the duration of time the government can hold data about their communications. Really? Seriously? Recommendations rejected by Obama. Number one, the FBI will still be able to issue national security letters, a form of administrative subpoena used to obtain documents such as financial statements and library records without the approval of a court that no, no, without the approval of a court within the judicial branch of government they go to the secret court and they say here's what we're going to do and the secret court goes okay the judicial branch and the supreme court or any other court would look at them and go no you're not Number two, the NSA has not been ordered, as many had wanted, to avoid building, quote-unquote, back doors into software, a practice that critics say weakens encryption standards, or to exploiting flaws in software to conduct cyber attacks. This, these are the two that the recommend two recommendations rejected by Obama. In other words, yeah, continue using the secret court and continue building back doors. Okay. All right. Let me go to abcnews.go.com for this article. As soon as it comes comes up here, got it. Some, you know, technology is really good when it works. From Mary Claire Dale from Associated Press, two students shot in Philly school gym, boy cleared. A teenage boy originally thought to have been involved in a Philadelphia high school gym shooting that wounded two fellow students has been cleared. Police say the shooting happened at the Delaware Valley Charter High School in North Philadelphia on Friday afternoon. A boy and a girl were each shot in the arm. Police found one boy wanted in the shooting near his home. Police Commissioner Charles Ramsey says the boy was questioned and released from custody and is no longer a, sus a suspect. They, a second boy turned himself into the police Friday night. A third is being sought. One of the wounded students has been released from the hospital. The other is listed in stable condition. Folks, I just don't really know. Now... I don't know, folks. I mean, uh, did you know there's a fire in California again? L.A. area wildfire only smoldering. Evacuees return to their homes. Defendant, ad, ad, defendant admits sending a letter with uh, ricin to Obama. Remember last year somebody sent that? Supreme Court to take major look at privacy in a di digital age. I should take a look at how I'm talking. <laughs> enunciating my words uh anyway that's just some of the news you might want to check out on your own anyway what can i say folks go to freeamericaradio.us go check out the sponsors page if you want to sponsor um free america radio network you can if you want to uh donate to the cause if you will, you can do that too. If you want to go to the store at freeamericaradio.us and purchase some merchandise, all of that helps Free America Radio Network get to the next level. 
things are changing over the next month or so. So stay tuned, and I will tell you more about that later. In the meantime, if you have any questions, concerns, any projects you're working on, any blogs, any websites that you would like me to know about, any inside information, yes, you can also email me all that stuff to uh, accept the inside information to freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Also, if you want to send some more secure mail to me, you can do that, freeamericaradio at unseen.is free america radio at unseen.is yes oh folks what are we gonna do man what are we going to do it's just uh, I, I you ever get to that point Sorry, I'm looking at my laptop. You ever get to the point where you have, you get to that point where you have seen certain things and go, what the hell? Has that ever occurred to you? Has that ever, I mean, have you ever had that happen? Or or other people look at you and go, what? You know? What kind of drugs are you on, boy? Yeah, I've never had that. <laughs> I've had people look at me all the time go, what the hell are you talking about? This. Let me leave you with this. When someone calls you a name, when someone says you're one of those right-wing conspiracy theory kooks, I always look at them and go, show me the things I talk about that haven't come true. Yeah, they immediately become Peter Griffin. You know, and then they walk away. You know why? Because I share the truth one fact at a time. And people hate that. People don't like that. People don't like being ripped out of their comfort zone. People don't like being torn away from their little cookie cutter world and their little delusional thoughts. They hate that. They don't like that at all. So I do it every day. Consider me a parachutist. And you are in tandem with me because you want to feel the excitement of pulling the cord and going out, you know. You've seen it, right? What if... Well, not what if. Here I am to you. I am your parachutist. You are strapped to the front of me. And guess what? We go out of the plane. We're falling from 10,000 feet. And you're screaming like a freaking girl. Until I get down to a certain point and I pull the cord and the parachute goes out. And we sail to the ground and we're safe. <clears throat> what are you going to do then? You're going to look at me and say, God, you were wrong for me. <laughs> no, you're going to experience that on your own. And you're going to decide for yourself what you feel is best for you. And let me remind you of something. What is true for you is true for you. It's your perspective. And if your perspective says that none of this is a problem... You got a problem. In the meantime, folks, join me Monday. Free America Radio at dot US. And 
Free America Radio at USA.com is the email. Free America Radio US is the website. Free America Radio at uh, USA.com is the email. Ask me any question you like. No question is off limits. If I don't know, I will tell you I don't know. Come join me Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Free America Radio Network with the views expressed live. In the meantime, folks, let me remind you, we the people have the power, for we are America.